Hello everybody. Today in this lesson we're going to do some reading, speaking, maybe some writing and looking at the regular verbs. So please come and join me. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hello there. Okay, here we go. Let me just share this with you. Romain, uh, where are you from? I'm from uh, France. Oh, really? Uh, which part of France? Do you live in the north of France or the south of France? South of France. Oh, I you're live in uh, Marseille. Oh, right at the other end of the country. I'm at the other end. I'm in Canterbury. So, quite away from you. Uh, excuse me, I don't understand. I, I live in Canterbury. That's the other end of France. So you have to go to the other end of France and um, across to England and then you come to Canterbury. You, do you know the, the Pas de Calais? Yeah. Um, no, Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur. Yes, that's right. Yes. So it's only two or three some miles from us. I live by the sea. Okay then, so regular verbs. Now, you may know this rule already. You may know the rule. So, what do I mean first of all by a regular verb? Can you tell me what a regular verb is, Romain? Um, regular verb is a verb... Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you look at the rule, there's a big clue there because we're looking at how to pronounce the endings which have ed at the end, ed. Actually, it's not ed in sound. Ed is not pronounced ed. So, can anybody tell me what a regular verb is? Who can tell me? There are uh, irregular verb and other regular verb. <laughs> I didn't think that last ex explanation was very clear, but uh, Romain, so we've got regular and irregular verbs. It's one way of dividing verbs, categorizing verbs. So, can anybody tell me an irregular verb? Irregular. Irregular. Gen. Say again. Gen. Can you write it for me? Yes. Run. Run. Irregular. Run. So, can you tell me the irregular part of it? What is irregular about run? J 
run, run, run. Run, and the past is ran. ran. So Jen. when we make the past, we ought to write words which show it's the past. So what word would be good in my sentence with the past tense? What word tells everybody that it's we're speaking about the past? Well, there might might be more than one word. Can anybody give me one word which helps me know I'm speaking about the past? Uh, teacher, can I? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, if I say for example, uh, yesterday more from five miles. Yes. Yesterday the is, a good... is telling you that the action took place in the past. If you say yesterday I ran five miles, then the, the word yesterday shows everybody. It shows everybody that the past tense is coming. So um, I want to first of all find some some words which help us to know whether we're in the present tense or the past tense or maybe a past perfect tense because we have three forms of the verb. So run, ran, ran. Three forms of this irregular verb. So the second one, yesterday I ran five miles, is a very good sentence. Now what sentence could we use to show the present simple? What does the present lot, simple uh, yeah what does the present simple tell us about that the action to took place to place immediately well that would might be the present continuous for example okay. i am reading now i am reading now so we use a continuous tense to say that it's happening right now um, so what does the present simple usually mean without the continuous tense <laughs> Yes, uh, I have run. Yes, sorry. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I read the newspaper every day. I read I read the newspaper. A newspaper every day. Every day. I I read a newspaper every day. Yes, a word like every day, um, or often, usually, regularly. All of those words are good with the present simple. And to make a perfect tense, can anybody make a present tense, a perfect tense, present perfect sentence? Can I try? Yes? I haven't met you for a long time. And I couldn't really quite hear you because you're quite quiet. And um, one of my boys is making a bit of noise behind me. Say that again, please. I haven't met him. For a long time. I haven't met him for a long time. I haven't met him for a long time. That looks good. So we have meet, met, met. Yes. Hope I didn't type this one in incorrectly. So that's good. So we are going to look at different sentences like that. So the rules, the sound. The sound before the ed ending. The final ver verbs, verb sound. The f final sound of the root verb. For example, talk, talk or miss. That determines the sound of the ending. So the ending has to fit on to the end. So we have to make it sound good. It has to fit. So, uh, mm -hmm. a teacher, I got a question for you, please. So I have some confusion when I try to speak English. I have confusion between meet and and no. When can I use no and when can I use me, teacher, in a conversation? Well, that's I don't really understand because meet and no are very different. If you know somebody, mm -hmm. then you have knowledge about them, which can mm -hmm. vary. Because you know, in French we have two verbs for no. 
so in English we only have one so we use it for everything or knowing so if you know somebody you could be familiar with them or you could know something factual so if you know a person then you know them uh, if you meet them then you are going to be in the same place as them so if you say I have met somebody I don't see the connection with meet and know except the only connection I can imagine is that after meeting somebody you might mm -hmm. know them because I presume you meet them and speak to them and then you will know them okay so I will mm, have to think about that a bit more because for me they're they're totally different knowing somebody and meeting somebody are two different things but you can't know somebody without meeting them maybe you can today today you can know somebody quite well before you meet them so really today they are different okay so um, we've got three different kinds of sound and I can see in number two id, uh, tid and did so and duh so we've got t, d, id, different sounds at the end, but we never say I talked, I missed. This is always wrong. So when we use the verb as a verb, not a participle adjective, but as a verb in the past, we don't do that. We rarely do it, even when it's used as a as an adjective. Sometimes we can hear it, but as a verb, it's never ed at the at the end in sound we never say i miss said i talk ed it's not good so who can tell me those two words talk or miss how do we pronounce them uh, which one teacher say that again talk or miss when you pronounce in the talk, past uh, the talk is uh, like a talk Talked, and yes. the other uh, talked, and the other one is missed. Yes, well, the missed and and missed, missed. It really, mm, uh, it can have a bit of a t or d there, but it's m very important not to say missed, missed. So missed, I missed you, missed you. Now, sometimes when we speak, the sounds run into the next following word. So. I won't worry too much about missed or missed, missed. Missed sounds better and easier to say usually missed. I missed everybody, missed you. Just like Scotch missed. Okay, so now um, I'm going to move the screen a moment. Have a look at the first exercise, a reading. So reading, I'm going to read it through and then ask for a volunteer to read it through so yesterday I managed to walk all the way to the shops I had walked for over five miles when I entered a supermarket where I escaped from the bad weather and topped up my mobile phone credit I rested a few minutes then continued with my journey I tried to catch a bus but unfortunately I just missed it I passed my stop and disappeared from view it passed my stop and disappeared from view. It rained a lot that day, so I decided to buy an umbrella. I opened up the umbrella and almost poked an old lady in the eye. She was a little surprised, but soon realized that it had been an accident and looked happy enough as she wandered off down the street. Now, sometimes it joins up with what comes next. So I opened up, I opened up my umbrella. The D can kick off the up. I opened up my umbrella. I opened up the umbrella. Okay, so now with that on the screen, let's make it a bit bigger. That's a bit bigger and even still. A bit bigger and even still. A bit bigger. Okay, so there it is on the screen. So now, Romain, are you there still? 
Yes. I'd like to hear you first. You were the first in the door, so could you please read it for me? Yes. Uh, yesterday, I manage uh, to. Now, in English, we say managed. So some words which are in French and English, the age at the end is age sometimes. So this word is managed. I managed to walk. I managed to work. I managed to work. To, uh, uh, let's try to get the walk sound. Is a, the vowel sound in walk is a, a bit like horse, horse or walk. Not um, so. Try walk. Walk uh, all the way to the shops. Um, I had worked. Yeah, and in French you might not say her, but in English we want to say I had. I had walked. So try to get the strong her and less on the ending. So I had walked. I, I had walked for over five miles when I enter, entered. Entered, yes. Entered uh, a supermarket where I uh, escaped. <laughs> right, let's go back to supermarket because not a supermarket but supermarket, supermarket where supermarket. I escaped. 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 Where I escaped from the bad weather. And, and wh when we say escaped, we want A, like hey, train, escaped a. from the bad weather. Where A escaped from the bad weather and topped up me mobile phone credit i rest rested few, i rested i rested for a few minutes then continued with my journey now jour journey is um sounds a bit french so je jug not je like je but je journey jour journey journey i tried to catch a bus but unfortunately Unfortunately, I just missed missed it. I just missed it. It passed my stop uh, and disappeared from view. It rained. It uh, it rained a lot that day, so I decided decided to buy an umbrella and opened. Open it up. Op I opened up. I opened up. I opened up the umbrella and almost poked. Poked. And oh, you know, you need to get some more open vowels for bus and opened and poke. Oh, so bus. Not so much bus, but bus and poked. So let's have a nice O. Oh, poked. Poked. That sounded perfect. <laughs> <laughs> An old lady in the uh, She was little surprised, but soon re realized. Realized, uh, realized. Realized, realized that he had been an accident and uh, looked happy enough as she wandered. Wondered. Wondered. wondered off down the street. Yes, again on the ending there, you can say wandered off. So like um, topped, topped up, topped up, topped up. It turns to tup and wandered off. This is doff, wandered off. So when the next word begins with a vowel, then kick it in like that. Uh, topped up, wandered off, uh, missed it. Okay, so that was good. Well done. Um, now let's see who hasn't spoken today. Let's see who who hasn't said a uh, word. Teacher, uh, teacher, sorry for interruption. What is walked? What is walked? It is the past tense of to walk. Parked. To parked. Park. Uh, parked. Uh, uh, it is the uh, parked. Parked. I don't see parked anywhere, but you can park a car. Uh, parked. Um, Parked, poked, poked. That is poked. Yeah. Well, if you poke something, there is something called a poker, which is a big metal stick which you use to poke the fire. You stick the stick into the fire, 
and you can poke somebody with your finger. Just one finger is sticking out and the rest of your hand is closed and you touch somebody hard with that one finger. Poke somebody uh -huh. in the ribs and they say, hey, what do you want? It's like a tap on the shoulder. It's just touching. Tap, tap, tap. Uh -huh. But poke is one like a fire with a stick into the fire. A red uh -huh. hot okay, poker teacher. is something like that. So a train driver with a steam engine will have a poker like that for the coal fire. Okay. So Okay. Thank you. We say sometimes it's better than a poke in the eye. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, teacher. Have you ever uh, had an umbrella and you, you t put up your umbrella and accidentally you can easily poke somebody? Okay, so who hasn't read anything? Let me hear. Um, it, 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 has, it has happened before when I tried to you to open up an umbrella. So I had the same situation than the old lady. <laughs> yes, it can easily I happen. Uh, yeah, I understand the meaning right now, teacher. Thank you so and much for the explanation. Umbrellas are easy to leave behind on trains too. That's another thing I've done. So, um, let's see who we've got. Uh, a teacher, a teacher, uh, I'm ready for one more in, um, interruption. So I love, I love the way how British speak English. So I know, I know we can, we can talk as a British, you know. <laughs> but uh, what, what we can do in order to have this kind of pronunciation like British. Well, I, I, I think love the way how British speak. One thing about, well first of all there are quite a few different accents in Britain, probably more than varied accents in Britain than anywhere else because we have uh -huh. so many different accents. But if you're speaking about the British accent from the southern regions where I live, then this kind of accent is connective. That's the best thing I can say about it. So we have some tricks where we connect everything, a bit like in French too. In France, mm. when you speak French, people try to connect to the next word all the time in a smooth way. So let mm. me show you one from the text here. You can see the umbrella. The umbrella, can you see that? And also, there is another word, um, mm -hmm. the. So the shops the shops is the the shops but the umbrella so I don't say the umbrella can you hear if I say the umbrella it's broken the mm -hmm. umbrella but if I say the umbrella so you, use, so you say the umbrella yes so the umbrella the shops. But the shops the shops because if I say the shops it's broken again so ah, okay. it shops. has to connect and another, there are some tricks like this which we don't okay. learn, but we just do. Um, another trick is this one. You see the word for. Mm -hmm. Some speakers of English will always make an R sound for with a R at the end. For, but in our English we say it this way. We say if we need the R, the R, we use it. So I use it in the first one, but not the second one. So I say, four apples, four apples, but four bananas. And there are lots sounds, of tricks like this. It sounds soft there. Yes, everything is soft. Everything is joined together smoothly. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So intonation and joining is, is important for our accent. But... There are different accents and different ways to speak English. Right. But that's so I didn't know I didn't know anything about a teacher, so I'm learning something new right now. So you, 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 you explained to me that people in in UK have different accents. So this is the first time that I know that people there have different kind of Oh you know. the accents in the UK vary more than anywhere else in the world. I mean the there are some very, very different accents. For example, in Glasgow and in Newcastle, we have some very strong accents. So when people speak about accents, quite often English learners speak about American or British accents. 
And there is a way of saying, hey, you are from America or you are from Canada or Australia or Britain. But the truth is that the accents inside Britain can vary tremendously. So the Glaswegian accent, that's a person from Glasgow in Scotland, that accent is very different. And the Newcastle accent and they use different words and the Scottish accents so even a mild Scottish accent is very different so um, yes in Yorkshire they have another accent again so there are probably 12 different accents which I could try to imitate and people would know which one it was so if I say hey up down to pub which one is that that's Yorkshire and if I say the best in the world that's Scotland and if I say, um, what are you doing, mate? Are you right? That's um, more like a Cockney accent. So you see, there are, there are lots and lots of them. But when you learn English, try to not speak in any kind of extreme way. Try to pick on something which is somewhere in the middle, some kind of nice international way that everybody has experience of listening to. Okay, so now I'd like to see if, um, Jose, are you there? Are you there, Ga Jose Garcia? Yes, I am here. Great, I'd like to, you to try reading it now, please. Yes, uh, what, what do you want I read? I'd like you to read, Yesterday I Managed, and remember, okay. we're reading it, and we're trying to pronounce all of those regular verbs in okay. a nice way. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Yesterday I managed to work all the way to the shops. Okay, I just stop there a moment because I want you to do that first one again. Managed. Managed Man, to yes. walk. That one's probably the hardest of them actually. So try that one again, please. Manage. Managed. <laughs> Manage. Managed. 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 That's the tricky Managed. bit. The ending. The, the ending is really difficult if you think too much. And sometimes when you speak, it's best not to speak, to think. So if I think about it, I will get myself in a big twist and fall over. If I say, J -j like this, Whoa, what's happening? Oh, but it's best not to think too much. Just try it. Run through it. I managed to talk. I managed to walk. I managed to walk. I managed to walk. All the way to the shops, I had walked for walked, over. Walked, 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 walked. walked. Yeah. So we don't say it yeah. uh, here. We say walked. This one is a t. So when we have a k at the end, it's k -t -k -t. I walked. <laughs> I had walked for over five miles when I entered the supermarket. That word is miles, by the way. Miles and miles. I walked for miles and miles. I, I walked miles. for. I walked for over five miles. Yeah, that's it. When I entered that supermarket, where I escaped from the bad weather, and topped up my mobile phone credit. Yeah, we say mobile, mobile, not mobile, but uh, mobile, some, some mobile. people can say mobile, but you know, with with yes. this word mobile, you have to be a bit careful, because um, there are some times when you have to get the right sound, but uh, m mobile phone, mo mobile phone, uh, you can say in America, but in Britain you'd say mobile phone. Mobile okay. phone, yes. I rested for a few minutes, then continued with my journey I journey, journey 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 I tried to catch a bus but unfortunately I just missed it it passed my stop and disappeared from view disappeared ear disappeared disappear yes disappear from view it rained a lot that day, so I decided to buy an umbrella. Yeah, you, did, I, you skipped that last one, but decided, decided. Can I have that nice and clearly? I, I decided to buy an umbrella. 
decided to buy an umbrella. I opened up the umbrella and almost poked down old lady in the eyes. She was a little surprised, but soon really... I didn't really get the ending on that one. I heard she was a little surprised, but not surprised. You know, sometimes the dirt is quiet, not so strong, but we must hear it. She was a little surprised. So she there must be a little, little soft sound at the end, otherwise it sounds like the present. Uh, surprise, surprised. Surprise, surprise, surprised. Surprise, surprise, but soon realized that it Real had life. been an accident mm -hmm. and looked happy enough as she wandered off down the street. Good work, okay. Um, so you. now, what we need to do next is move the screen down. Now here, I want everybody to have a go at this. Just one or two sentences if you are not sure, but if you can do more, let's have some more. So I want you to write about things that have happened to you in the past in text. Post the sentences and then I'm going to read them and discuss them. So just get cracking please. Write something in the Verbling chat. So. Uh, regular if possible so I was born um, is difficult to do because I was born is not going to be easy to do that one so what kind of verbs can we use um, we can and I went is irregular too I went to school that's irregular so I want some sentences with a regular verb from your own life in the past. Sentences please into the chat. Here I've put one in, which is I played every day for years. I played. So can I have some sentences? Yesterday, I cooked some new dish dishes for my birthday party maybe I cooked some new dishes yesterday I cooked so cooked is a great one because cooked is a bit like walked so cut 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 I cooked can you read it for me please your sentence read your sentence to me yes yesterday I cooked some new dishes for my Birthday party. Good. I cooked some new dishes for my birthday party. Yes. I attended. Let's do Jose's first. I studied English yesterday. That's interesting because it's regular, even though the Y has disappeared because Y's turn into I. I studied English yesterday. Jose, can you read it aloud, please? I can't. I am lost a little. Uh, uh, the class matter, please. Pass. Okay, I studied English yesterday. Asma, uh, Asma, I attended to this class before half an hour ago. Well, I don't want to read that one as it is. I need to fix that one a little bit. Um, I attended this class, so you don't attend to unless it's a phrasal verb. If you attend to something, then you you go to it and make sure it's okay. So I attended to my son when he had a problem. I attended this class. So be careful how you use it, transitive or intransitive. I attended this class and not before half an hour ago because before half an hour ago means first of all half an hour ago but then before that. So um, more than half an hour ago is good. 
Um, I watched documentary film yesterday. That Shakur, I can't have you read that until it's fixed. There's an, an indefinite article missing there. So can you put one little word, er, uh, into your sentence? And then you can read it to me. I watched a documentary yesterday. You don't really need the word film either, but you do need a. Uh. I watched a documentary yesterday. Okay. Can you read that? I watched a documentary yesterday. Perfect. So, I attended this class half an hour ago. Yes, that's better. I watched the duel at Blood Creek. Crete? Is it? In Blood, Blood Creek. Blood Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Video, yes. I watched a documentary yesterday. Okay, some good sentences are coming up now. So, okay, let's leave that exercise then, unless there's one or two more. Keep going while I move the screen, because I'm going to move the screen a bit further now. Teacher, I want to read. Yes, what would you like to read? Um, Do you mean generally? Yeah, generally, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, we're going to choose a letter. First A, so you can start off with A. I would like you to read through the verb list A. Can you read those verbs for me? A. Yes, yes, A. Now, I when say, you read them, but first of all, just read them for me. Just read them through. Okay, teacher. Well, read them aloud. Accept, add, uh, admire. <coughs> I'll read them aloud. Accept, add, uh, admire, admit, advise, afford, okay. agree, alert, allow. Notice in those agree, afford, alert, the stress comes away from the first letter. Admit, admire. Look at them. Okay. So they don't get stressed until the first syllable comes with the consonant. Allow, okay. amuse. Can you read them for me? Okay. I said, add, admire, admit, advise, afford, agree, allure, allow. You're not getting amuse. the endings on afford. Afford. Okay. It's got to I be said. soft, but it's got to be there. And alert. Has I, to said. Be there. I said. Accept. 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 Two accept. sounds there. Accept. A accept. Ad ad admire. Admire. Admit. Admire. Admit. Advise. Afford. Agree. Alert. 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 You have to have the soft alert. T at the end, otherwise we won't hear it. Not alert, alert. but alert. Alert. Hello. Amuse, analyze, analyze, no. analyze. Now this one is in, it's important to get the pattern. Da 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 da. Analyze, uh, analyze, analyze. Analyze. Perfect. Announce. Announce. Annoy. Answer. Annoy. Apologize. Answer has no word, so answer. Answer. No, not swear. Answer. Answer. Yes. Apologies. Apologies are um, some are nouns. Apologize is a verb. I, I apologize. Did you get my apologies? I apologize. I should send you some apologies. Maybe some letters. Apologize. 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 Appear. Applaud. 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 Or like horse. Okay. Applaud. Appreciate. Appreciate, 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 approve, approve, yes, argue, 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 yes, argue, thank you, arrange, arrest, arrest, Arrive. get the t on the end of the T one, so admit, arrest, I want to hear something at the end. Attract. Arrive. 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 Okay. Okay. Arrive. Us. Attack. 
attack. Attach, attack. Attach, attack. Okay, attach, attack. Okay, attend. Attract, a boy. Yeah, so you're dropping the T's at the end. That some people think that ordinary English people do that, but they don't. They say them very softly, like attract. So when you listen, you can hear it. Attract, attack, attempt. It's got to have something there at the end. Arrest, arrest. I need to pause emph emphasis in ED at the end of the word. Well, that's the next bit of the exercise, but hold on, let me change over to somebody else for a moment, because I want to... Can I try? All right, you haven't said much at the moment, Ayat, so, but I don't want you to read them this time. I yes. want you to go to the proper exercise, which is not that. The proper exercise is to um, make some sentences with those words. So I want you to choose from A... Um, some some of those words, maybe let's choose one first of all. So, Ayat, can you take one of those words and make a sentence where you're using a past form of the verb? So, number one, accept. Uh, in the past? Yes, so accepted. I, I accepted uh, his, uh, his apologies. Yes, but when you s accept apologies, you accept the noun. So you accepted his apologies. Okay. He apologized. You accepted his apologies. Okay, now the next one, add. Add. I added. I added. Can I try? All right, um, let's do this where if anybody has an idea about one, we'll try everybody speaking. If it doesn't work, then we'll shut down that. But um, if anyone knows an, a sentence with add, can they say it? Past form add, added. I added your name uh, on the list. I added your name to the list, maybe. Yes. Okay. Or uh, on the list isn't so wrong, but I added something to something. Okay. Okay. Ad admired. I admired uh, these uh, pictures. I admired these pictures, this picture. These, these, these pictures, pictures, this picture. So watch out for it, e, it, e, these, this, the, these, this. Okay, good. Admitted, admitted. Yesterday, I admitted my fault. Good. Yesterday, I admitted my fault. Advise. I advise. Um, I'm sorry. I'm advise you. Yes, I'm. Uh, yesterday, I advise you to take care of your dog. You need to be a bit stronger on the ending. So yesterday, I advised you. You now listen to the way it goes, because if you say you advised you, do uh -huh. you do you advised you? Okay. All right. So um, next one is afford. What means afford? If you can afford something, then it means that you can do it without too much trouble or expense. So um, if <coughs> some, so you do something, I can afford. I can afford to buy now. It's often used with money. Yes. So I can. I can't. So how can we use the past tense? Afforded. Afforded. What what's the meaning of uh, afforded? Well, when you can pay for something. That's ah, the, okay. the usually it's money. used for that. It, usually it's used with money and buying things, and if you can comfortably afford something. But if something happens um, to allow you to do something, then you could use this word as well. Um, I was afforded the opportunity, like I was given the opportunity, and it was came to me. So yes, it's usually used with money, uh, meaning you don't run out of money. You can buy something, you have enough money, and it's not too much trouble for you to pay for it. So I can afford it. Yesterday I afforded. Well, it's not something which we usually use in the past tense notice because usually this is used in a, a hypothetical future tense or present tense, so or question tense. So afforded might be difficult. Can anybody make a sentence with afforded? 
Can you hear me? You're very quiet, but I can just about hear you. I afforded a new car. I afforded a new car. Yeah, it sounds um, a little interesting because people don't tend to use it that way that much. I afforded. Um, I bought a new car. Oh, could you? Are you sure that you can afford it? Yes, no problem. So this one doesn't get used such a lot in the past. So let's move on to agree. Agreed. This one does get used in the past. So who can make a sentence with agreed? I agreed with him. I agreed with him, yes. I agreed with him. That was nicely done. Next one. I'm not going to say the next word, so I want somebody to say one. Now I'm not going to say the words, but you need to say your sentence. So the next one. You are not a. You are not maybe. To, uh, what is the next? After alert, alert. alerted, alert. Yeah. alerted. Ah, oh, sorry, yeah. alerted is the next one. Yes. If you push uh, this button, you can alert. You will be alerted because yeah. we want the past. So you will be alerted, and that's actually an adjective, uh, um, or uh, you will. Yes, yeah, so you will be alerted. All right then. So allow is next. What's the past? Allow. I allow it, uh, it when it was mine. Allowed. Allowed. Um, actually, the past tense is a homophone of allowed speak say this verb in the past tense allowed i was not allowed to speak aloud in class so i was not allowed to speak aloud in class homophone next one then anybody call out a sentence we can amuse this night Yes. Now, Queen Victoria was famous for saying, we are not amused, meaning I'm not happy about this. We are not amused. So, next one. Who can do the next one? I was not allowed to speak aloud in class. Next one is an. It's the one that in this tense, in the present tense, is da-da-da, da-da-da. The scientific... The, uh, the scientist analyze uh, the cell. But I didn't really get the d at the end of it. Analyze was well said, but analyzed, analyzed. Very soft D analyzed. at the end, analyzed it. If you put it at the end, it's easy to get the D because you say dit, dit, analyzed yes. it, analyzed the. Yeah, if you start with a consonant though, then it's soft the d is soft so analyzed the mm. so can I, yeah try one uh, an analyze can i try analyze yes that's the present she analyzed the situation and then decided what to do she analyzed the situation and then decided what to do very good okay so let's go to announce Shall I? Yeah, if you're ready with one. I an I announce him that I am back today. Yes, I announced my uh, engagement to Queen Elizabeth. I announced. Yes, annoy. What does this mean, annoy? Well, it's Noises, noises can be very annoying if you're trying to do your work. You know, I'm trying to work, but I can't work because people are making too much noise. I get very annoyed at this. I get angry. I get annoyed. Hey, go away. Take that away with from here, please. I'm annoyed. A noise, a noise, an oyster, but a noisy noise, a noise, an oyster more. They didn't, uh, they didn't give up annoy that girl. Say that again, please. They didn't give up annoy that girl. They didn't give up annoying her because after give up, you give up doing something. I didn't, they didn't give up annoying that girl. They annoyed her a lot. 
and they are still annoying her. They didn't give up annoying her. Okay, next one is answer. Yesterday, I'm answered to my teacher. Now, um, this is not an intransitive verb, so there was a mistake there. So can you correct it? Do you understand what a transitive verb is? This is a Trans transitive verb, okay. not an intransitive They answered... Uh, it's difficult for They me. answered him. <laughs> they so not answered two. Him. Okay, okay. I understand now. They answered him. Yes, they answered the teacher. They answered the teacher. Now be careful, there's no W. Answered. Answered, answered, him. answered. Answer me. Answer me. Okay. Answer me. Okay. Yeah, okay. Apologize. He apologized me, but um, I couldn't um, accept it. Yeah, that's good. He apologized for what he had done. Yes, apologized mm. for something. He apologized to somebody. He apologized for his behavior. Good. Appear. Uh, my mobile phone appeared in a draw. My mobile phone appeared in a draw. Yeah, I would say turned up there, but um, appeared might be a little bit... You can use appeared, some things appear, but um, my mobile phone appeared, yeah, it's like it's animated and it just, it turned up, I found it, yes. Okay, good one, so let's move on to applaud. Does everybody know what applaud means? So who can make a sentence with that one? He applauded me yesterday uh, while uh, I was conference. He applauded me yesterday while I was in a conference. Good. He, he applauded, did, applauded. So next one, appreciate. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? The person who can do it in the past tense. Yes, there's, there, there could be some quite big differences between clap and applaud. You know, you can have a round of um, applause, but you don't really want um, a round of the clap. So, yes, clapping and applauding can be the same, but you have to choose the right words carefully. Who can make a, s a sentence with he didn't appreciate me uh, instead of the uh, yes. I did hold it, hold the it, job hold good. It. Hold your horses. You used didn't as an auxiliary verb and that takes the past tense and therefore you dodged out of appreciated because you said he didn't appreciate because after a modal you don't have the past tense and I need appreciated appreciated we can use appreciated uh, to uh, I, I tell I tell the I tell the sorry yeah appreciated so um, I appreciated everything well you actually you wouldn't say that in the past tense you would say something like I appreciate everything you have done because you still appreciate it so when do you use the tent the past tense appreciated probably if you go back again and talk about the past she appreciated me very much she's finished you know this okay. was a long time ago so okay. some verbs don't all don't sit in so comfortably in the past so to know, we know that one, and some others don't use, usually uh, have a past tense quite so often. So um, appreciate, well if you appreciated yesterday, then you probably still appreciate. So that's why it's more permanent, and some verbs are more permanent, and they don't tend to be so common in the past. So let's move to the next one, approve. 
her father approved his behavior. Her behavior. Well, you're missing a preposition because his father approved his beha behavior. I think her behavior. Behaved, approved of. Her behavior. Approved of his behavior. Approved of. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's move to the next one. Argue. <laughs> Yesterday, I uh, argued with my boyfriend. Yes, argue with, argued with my boyfriend. Okay, that's good. Argued about this, argued about that, argued with people. Okay, arrange. I arranged the flowers in a vase. Yeah, okay, but I would do them in a vase, but you can if you, in America, you can do them in a vase. Okay, so let's move on to... Away from flower arranging now to arrest. So we're sheriff or the policeman. Policeman arrest that uh, guilt uh, guilt person. The policeman arrested the guilty person. Well, probably he's not sure. We're not sure yet if he's guilty because the police comes to arrest him um, at an earlier stage. But yes. He's probably found guilty later, but um, arrested the criminal. Maybe he, they th we think he's guilty. Okay, so With the murder. Yeah, we saw we caught him red-handed. We saw him do it, so he's guilty. It was him. Arrive. I arrived in uh, on the bus station. I arrived on the bus station. I arrived and then was it under? Un, 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 in to in, I arrived in the bus station. Bristol station, the bus station. I, arri bus I, station. I arrived. I arrived. I arrived. Which preposition shall we use here? I arrived at the bus station. I arrived in the bus station. I arrived. Hmm. Uh, in. I arrived in or at, yeah, okay, the bus station, you're saying, the bus station. When you say bus, try to get the vowel sound a bit open, like uh, up, bus. bus. Because in French it would be more like boo, bus, but in English it's more like bus. Okay, bus. So, now, let's go to the next one, ask. He asked, uh, he asked me... Um, for a day. Yes, that's right, transitive. He asked me for a date. Yeah, you're always on topic. So let's do the next one. Attach. I attached your email yesterday. I attached your email to what though? Because I, there wasn't, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bit lost as to what actually happened there because we don't do we usually attach emails well we, we attach things to emails don't we so we so we can say um, there was an attachment with your email that I sent yesterday um, make tell me that sentence again because I was a little bit confused I attached your email yesterday but what did you attach it to uh, attached to some document. Yes. Yeah, so I don't think you can attach the email. You attached a document to the email. The, the, the email I sent you had an attachment. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So let's go to the next one. Attack. What does it mean if you say that I'm unattached? Does it mean that uh, my brain's in another place and I'm a bit stupid? What does it mean if you're unattached? It is the bit. All right, well, let's move on to another verb here. So the next one will be the last one. 
which is the most interesting one? Maybe avoid, avoid. Can we finish with that one? I avoided the situation. I avoided drugs. Good. Okay. So one thing we have to learn from this practice is that verbs have prepositions sometimes. So some of these were transitive and some of them weren't and that seemed to be quite interesting, the practice there, which ones have prepositions after them. All right then, so that's in all the time we've got now, so we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot then, and if you play chess anybody, then come a bit later in an hour and join me there. So I'll say goodbye for now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you for this. Don't forget Bye. to follow me. Bye.